Our subliminal conscience is constantly comparing values each and every day. And one of those basic ways that it does this is for example, when you want to cross the road. First of all, you may look right and see if there is zero cars on the road. And then you want to look left and see if there's zero cars on the road to the left. So you're doing this comparison. We want to see no cars. And then if both of those statements are true, then we cross the road. And we call these comparisons that we're doing here, comparison operators in programming. We, the programmers, are the subconscious. Even though your mind does this automatically, we need to be able to program this. And it's simply allowing our programs to ask questions. We are asking, does this equal this? Or does it not equal this? Is this greater than this? Is that greater than this? So what we want to do is ask questions. And by allowing our program to ask questions on certain data types and values, you are enabling your program to think and you can change the way that your program functions based upon the conditions that you place within your program. So we're just going to be doing a little bit of console work here. So first of all, we have the double equals comparison operator and it compares what is to the left of it and what is to the right of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare, let's say the number 10 like so. So is 10 equal to 10? Yes, it is. So it returns true. Now with comparison operators, they always return a Boolean value. If what they have compared is correct, it will return true. And if not, it will return false. So is 10 equal to 100? The answer will be false. Also, you can compare strings such as hello. Is that equal to the string hello? Like so. And that's true. But is it equal to hello with a capital H. Let's find out. It returns false. So this is case sensitive. When it compares strings, it's very, very case sensitive. It not only looks at the characters, the values, but also the casing as well. Very important when doing comparisons. You can also have the floating point numbers like so. So is 10.5 equal to 10.5? Yes, it is, but it's not equal to 10.43. So that's gonna be equal to false. Then also you have the null and undefined. So null is equal to null. And you also have undefined. Don't forget that when you see undefined or null in your program, it just means that whatever piece of memory that you're trying to address has not really had anything specific specifically allocated to it. Now also you can compare the Boolean value. So you've got true and you've also got false, which is equal to false as well. But false is not equal to true. So there are all of your primitive values. You've got integers, floating point numbers, strings, null, undefined, and so forth. One to be very careful of is NAN. NAN is a primitive data type. However, it doesn't actually compare. So nan is not equal to nan, it's false. And we'll address this problem later on. So be very careful and never use nan with comparison operators. That is an absolute crucial must because you won't get a good comparison. So never use nan directly. Now, I want to talk about polymorphism. Remember, polymorphism is like Play-Doh. It's changeable. It's adaptable. We had a look at the plus operator when we said, right, okay, 10 plus 10. Well, this is a function in the JIT compiler that will take whatever's to the left of it and whatever's to the right of it and potentially add the values together. So we're going to get 20. But that may not happen in every situation because it polymorphs. For example, we've got two different data types now, the integer 10 plus the string 10. Well, that can't return an expression value. It actually returns a concatenation. So what it did was it said, right, this is a number, but strings take precedent because strings can contain numbers and letters. So what it did was it took the integer and it changed it into the string data type. It polymorphed, it changed it. You can think of it like a cast, it's changing its cast, its data type. It's ultimately retaining the same value, but it's just changing the data type to try to compare it. Or in this case, add it together, which is going to concatenate when it 
comes to strings. So it's just concatenating those two strings 10 and 10 together, producing 10, 10, this string here. Well, likewise, the double equals operator does polymorph. It will change the values when needs be. So for example, a good case is null is equal to undefined. Technically, they're two different types of primitive values. However, null is equal to undefined. So what it recognized was that null is kind of like undefined. They both mean the same type of thing, so it just polymorphed. And in this case, it's a good thing. numbers and strings. So I have the number 10 and the string 10. Now what happens is if there is a string either to the left or to the right of this comparison operator, a string always takes precedence. Why? Because strings can contain numbers and letters. So you can, con so you can turn an integer into a string, but you can't turn a string into an integer or a number. So that's what we're doing here is it's polymorphing, it's changing the data type of that number and it's converting it into the string data type and comparing it. So it's literally the string 10 is equal to the string 10 and that's true. So to prevent this from happening, what we can do is use the triple equals sign. Now this will not only check that the values are the same, it will also check the data types as well. So null and undefined, even though they mean the same type of thing, nothing's been allocated to that spot of memory, they are different data types. So now when I ask it, is null equal to undefined, it returns false. Because it's not only checking the value and it's not trying to change the value or the data type, it's leaving the data types alone, it's leaving the values alone, and it's doing the comparison. There's no polymorphism with the triple equals. They are not equal to one another. And likewise, the number 10 is not equal to the string 10 in this case, because there's no polymorphism. This is a number data type and this is a string data type and therefore it's false. They are not equal to one another. So that's how you prevent polymorphism from occurring when trying to compare two values to make them equal. Now, likewise, you also have the is not operator. Sometimes you wanna to check to make sure that let's say a variable is not equal to null or undefined. So what I can do is I can say is null not equal to null? The answer is false. They are equal towards one another. But if I say is null not equal to undefined, we also get false again. Now, if it returns false, that means that they are equal. Because don't forget, this is the is not operator. Is it not equal to this side? So let's say 10 is not equal to 100. True it isn't equal. But also the value of 10, is it not equal to the string 10? Well, that actually returned false. So is the number 10 not equal to the string 10? It says false. So that means they are actually equal. Don't forget that we're asking, is it not equal? Is that true? Well, it's actually returned false. So they are equal. So there's polymorphism happening here because we have the string 10 and we have the number data type 10. So again, to prevent this, we need to use the is not operator with an extra equal sign. So we're gonna say 10 is not equal to the string 10. So if you add that extra equal sign in there, it's now going to check the value and it's not going to change the data type. So now it's gonna say true, they're not equal. 10 is a number, that is a string, they're not equal. Likewise, null is technically not equal to undefined. However, if you use the single equal, it will return false. For example, null is not equal to undefined. That returned false, meaning it's equal. But technically, they are not equal. So that should be true. So now is null not equal to undefined? You'll notice it says true. They are not equal. Null is a different data type to the undefined. And we're just trying to compare them and find out the best. Ones. So we're just trying to compare these values and we're trying to find out is the data type matching and also is the value matching as well. So there is the double equals and the is not operator. They polymorph and if you add an extra equal sign onto them, they will no longer polymorph. Now also we have the greater than operator. So is 10 greater than 100? So it's gonna look at what is on left. 10 isn't greater than 100, so it returns false. But 10 is greater than one. So that's gonna equal true. Now you can also do this with strings as well. 
such as hello, is hello greater than the string hello? Well, the answer is going to be false because this string isn't greater than this string. They're both the same value. But however, if I had a few more, but however, if I had a few more O's onto my hello, you'll notice it says true. So this string is greater than this string on the right. So that's that. But you also have the greater than and equal to. So you can say the number 10 greater than and equal to 10. Because beforehand, if you said is 10 greater than 10, no, they're equal. But what you can do is have greater than and equal to. So if it's either greater than or if it's equal to whatever's on the right, return true. So 10 is equal to 10. You also can invert that around. So is 10 less than 100? And that's true. You can tell by this little point right here. That's how I remember. If it's the big one on the left-hand side, it's greater than. If it's the little one, it's less than. Is that less than, smaller than this side, which is bigger? And it is. So now we can also have is 10 less than 1? The answer is false. It isn't. And also you can say is it less than 10? Well, 10 isn't less than 10, so that's going to be false but you could say less than or equal to. Again, just by adding in the equal sign. Well, 10 is equal to 10, so that is true. And you could also try to do this with strings. Now, I don't recommend using the greater than and less than and less than and equal to and greater than and equal to operators with strings because they are kind of funny. So for example, you can have the hello, is it greater than, for example, hello? That's gonna be false. Now, if I add a couple of O's onto here, it's going to be true. This string is now greater than this string. And you're thinking, yeah, because the length is longer in that string, for example. There may be more spaces, more characters. But what happens when I add a capital H onto this string? Well, now it's false. This string is no longer greater than this string, which is showing me that it's not actually very good at compar at comparing strings because I would consider that string to be a little bit greater than the string on the right. So as you can see with these comparison operators, you can sort of compare them and see which one suits best. So take a look at the comparison operators and review them all. You have the double equals, the triple equals, then you have the not equals and is not equal value and type. Then also you have the greater than, less than, greater than and equal to, and less than and equal to comparison operators. Start playing around with them, experiment with them, see how they work, and then come back to me in the next lecture.